What is digital transformation? According to the definition from Salesforce, digital transformation is the process of using digital technologies to create new or modify existing business processes, culture, or customer experiences to meet changing business and market requirements. I would agree with that. And I, I think that would be an additional to this is digital transformation is ongoing. It's not, like you said earlier, it's not flip the switch and you're in digital. Right. It's, it's a process and it's yeah. not going to end. Just like you improve manual processes, mm -hmm. it's, it's the same thing just in a digital world. Yeah, just updating systems to 2022, catching everything up. Mm -hmm. The biggest impetus is basically flexibility. Like I said, you're not, you're not stuck in one location. You're not limited to a single copy of a file. You're not limited to having to go into an office and locate items. You can do it from anywhere at any time. I think a lot of benefits as well kind of lean toward companies becoming more green, you know, running through less paper products, trying to do less damage on the environment. I definitely agree with that. I watched one person, uh, they were creating a PowerPoint, printed the PowerPoint, looked at it on paper, it needed one edit on one sheet of paper, re-edited that, printed the entire thing over again, flipped through it a few more pages, found a typo in it, edited it, printed the entire Jeez. PowerPoint. I think it was six prints of PowerPoints for wow. a few edits. Yeah. Like, there's a lot better way yeah. to do this. And you can reference data a lot faster when right. it's digital. Yeah. Control F, find what Search you need to. Search feature is a wonderful thing. Yep. Exactly. Yeah, filing cabinets didn't come with that one. Yeah. And I think that businesses need to embrace the change and support going digital for competitive reasons. Mm -hmm. I mean, every company's doing it to some degree. Right. I mean, if you have a cell phone today, mm -hmm. you're using some cloud of cloud environment, digital right. technology. Yeah. The increase in efficiencies, like we were just talking about this, to find a file in a filing cabinet took mm -hmm. 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. Now control F in 10,000 documents and I can find it in two seconds. Right. So if I'm 60% more efficient than our competition, yeah game over. So what are the top considerations when undergoing digital transformation? I mean, if you have SOPs, I would start there. Start documenting what takes a lot of your team's time and effort. I think that's one way to go about it or the complete opposite of just look at the small stuff you could take off of people's right. plate. For example, OCR at your copier. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think then from just kind of a bigger picture is you need to consider availability of data. Is everybody going to be able to access that data? And then what security implementations do you need to build around that? Yep, that's a very good point. How can you ensure that your employees are on board with the change? I think, like I said, that's going to be an easy sell for the younger generation, millennial type folks that are, you know, ready to do everything digital and they don't want to have to keep track of paperwork. The older generation is going to be a little bit trickier, just selling to them the fact that it is going to save them time throughout the day. It is going to make them more nimble to be able to go in and edit things, adjust things, locate things. Just, I think the time savings may be the, the biggest play there for for people in in that demographic. It started at the company level too. Why the company wants to do this digital mm -hmm. transformation? Why do we want to automate this process? Yeah. Because I believe if teams know why, they're more susceptible right. to support. And you also got to look at, you know, where where do you want the company to be if you're a small mom and pop shop and you're looking to build out a franchise or expand, you can't just be stuck in one office. People at your mm -hmm. future remote locations are going to need access to the same data that you have locally. How do you best go about that? What's well, giving everybody access to the same systems? And the yeah. easiest way to do that is moving everything to the cloud, making it readily available. Definitely. Yeah, mo multiple locations is a completely different consideration when yeah. you're changing some things. Right. I think it puts more pressure mm -hmm. on, on moving to a, sure. a digital infrastructure. How can you make sure that the transformation goes smoothly as possible? Setting expectations that it's not gonna be a light switch flip. There's gonna be growing pains, there's gonna be adjustments that need to be made. Basically set expectations so people know, you know, this is this is a nine day change, this is a, a big deal. Let's pick a file or, or, or a format. I know QuickBooks is extremely popular and document management in general. Mm -hmm. What are some of the things that you would start your process on to transform those? For us, I think the, the initial part of that process is always the security restrictions building out the folder structure to know who needs access to what and lock that down from day one. Because once you open the gate, it's really hard to close it back again. Mm -hmm. So making sure anything that you have built out, make sure the user permissions are set properly so you know who's getting to what and when. So build the foundation for the data first. Yeah, definitely. Very good point. And then always know your why. Why are you doing this? What's the what's the end goal? Right. And what does success look like? If you're looking to reduce cost in this transition 
from physical or manual to digital, what are some of the ways that people should go about that process? So I think with most any business, labor is always going to be one of your top line items as far as uh, cost centers. And so just making a more efficient process for employees to be able to find the data that they're looking for is going to cut down the time spent on task. Definitely. I, I think agree. that's going to be the biggest cost savings you would find. So start to look at not money equals cost, but look at all things cost. Right. Time, materials. I agree with that. What are some of the things that people should look for if they're going to be increasing revenue? So a little bit what we just touched on as far as reducing cost is time savings for an employee because they're freed up from having to search for files. They're able to work on more tasks throughout a day more touch points and more availability for customers. Right. That's one thing that we, I would say we at AOP constantly try to do is look for pain points in our customers' mm -hmm. offices. Yeah. And that's how almost all of them, all of our divisions and services and products have came from right. our, our customers' feedback. MID, Managed IT Department, what we want to do is partner with businesses to help them implement the technologies that will ultimately make them more money. How can we make your process more efficient? What are the missing pieces that you don't know about because you just never had the time to look for them? Let us do that research. You know, Let us go out there and recommend technology products that could then help save you time and increase that bottom line. So what you're saying is if somebody wants to take advantage of digital transformation and move their company into 2022, an MID coverage from AOP would help them do that. Yeah, I definitely or, think a, a technology partner is definitely a, a great starting point yep, for that conversation. I would agree. What are some of the forms of digital transformation? Cloud computing is a completely different way to look at the operations of compute power for a business. Our developers made a good comment very early on when we were building ACS, and they said, treat your virtual environment like a herd of cattle. Half of it can disappear, but everything's still in operation. So a server dies, no one knows it. A router dies, no one knows yeah. it because everything is running in code. And that that changed the way I looked at cloud infrastructure. The neatest portion of, of that, and I think one of the biggest benefits that people don't give enough credit to is the speed of recovery. Quick story on, on this one, and talking about cloud computing, when the disaster in Lake Charles happened for the, the high rise downtown, mm -hmm. an attorney firm could no longer get to anything in their, their office. No servers, no desktops, like everything was done. And we spun up a cloud environment, pushed all of their data back to these virtual machines. Mm -hmm. And within an entire, within a business day, we had an entire firm of like 50, 60 people back in a virtual environment. Everybody had access to their data. And from that moment on, I felt better because one, right. it's you're taking constant backups. It's in a digital environment. And then to finish the story, in their virtual environment, crypto got on top of the server, hit the shares, all the desktops, and this happened within a few minutes. We, you, we selected all the virtual machines, deleted every single one of them, went back to a backup from an hour previous and restored everything, and the, wow. nothing was there. And that would have never happened if that environment was physical. After a situation like that one, it's that makes you a true believer forever. Any other facts or, or benefits to cloud computing? Maybe to destigmatize cloud computing a little bit, people hear cloud and they don't really understand what that means as far as technology is concerned. And really all it is, is instead of putting technology, putting a piece of hardware in your office physically, you're renting space on somebody else's hardware mm -hmm. at a much, much larger scale, like you said. So the failover availability is, you know, flip of a switch ready to go yep. you know, immediately. You don't have to worry about your box dying. You don't have to worry about power going out because there's redundancies built in place. You don't have to worry about storms coming through because data is backed up off site across the country. Basically just leasing somebody else's equipment to do the job of what your server used to do. On forms of digital transformation, uh, mobile platforms, big supporter for mobile platforms. And, and you touched on it earlier. All you want is your tablet, your laptop and a hotspot. Right. Yeah. You're, ready to go. You work from anywhere in the world. You really don't need to be in, in an office stuck at a desk, you know, using resources that aren't necessary. You can be wherever you want. And uh, I think, you know, the unified communications platforms like Microsoft Teams that have come out have really enabled people to work on any device anywhere at any time. Mm -hmm. It's definitely growing the capabilities of you know what a business can do. How would you define IoT? For me, IoT is anything with an IP address that is not a computer or a server. That a human would interact with. Right. Your refrigerator that's got an IP address or 
you know, a smart light bulb or, you know, a keypad on the front door, anything yep. like that. We're reading an article that had to do with our ISP side that we have gone from, I think it's four IP addresses on average to 16 IP addresses on average. Uh-huh per person in a home, including all these new IOT devices. Yeah. It's extremely weird to have a refrigerator and a microwave on the network. Right. And going back to what you were talking about earlier, starting with your security mm-hmm. is in, in, extremely important yeah. if you want to support IOT devices. Yeah, and I think that's the, the most common story that people know about IOT is the casino in Vegas that got hacked because they had Wi-Fi on the bubbler on their fish tank out in the lobby. Oh, wow. Somebody was able to get into that and through there, get their way into the network of the casino and pull customer data. That's crazy. So, yeah, it's a very common practice now to put everything IoT on its own subnet and you know let it be. And it makes you almost want to block off access to the rest of the internal network. Yeah, absolutely. Like your domain controller don't need to talk to the refrigerator. Right. Yeah, because all that really does is open up multiple doors into yeah. your network. Yeah, it's just making it easier for hackers to find a way in. All you need to know or all anyone needs to know, in my opinion, what digital transformation is, just call us. Yeah, just call AOP. Tell us where you want to go. We'll help you get there. there.